Okay, I thought we'd have a little talk about autophagy, and in particular the first phase of autophagy, which is macroautophagy. Uh, macroautophagy is when a uh, uh, material inside the cell is encapsulated, taken over to a lysosome, and degraded back into amino acids generally. Um, the way to think of your cells, however, is, is that uh, it's kind of like a cue. It's kind of like trying to get into a club late at night, and there's this long line of people trying to get in the same club. They're all trying to get in the same cell, in a sense, the same lysosome inside the cell. When you think of it this way, it's like, this is why dry fasting works so well. You know, in seven to eight hours of sleep, you're in autophagy for a short amount of time, um, not long enough to do a lot of good. Uh, you can do some, but there's a lot of people left in the queue when the club closes at night. That's kind of the way to look at it. Now, when you stay in autophagy for days on end with a dry fast, uh, you have time to get all those customers into the queue and into the club. Now, of course, the club is a cell, and the parts of the cell is the lysosome. Um, it's not a immediate uh, condition. It takes four to eight hours to turn on macroautophagy. Uh, then it turns off as soon as you wake up, as soon as you start eating. So that's the beauty in dry fasting. If you're able to turn on autophagy for long enough and keep it on for long enough, you get rid of all the stuff in the cell because this particular one, there's also microtophagy and, and uh, chaperone mediated, auto mediated autophagy and all these other types of autophagy going on in the cell, depending on what organelle needs to be replaced or whatever. Uh, but the big deal is, is if you're able to stay in autophagy long enough, you get rid of all your toxins and that's how. But it's not a simple process. You know, it takes a lot of time to build these things. Let's take a look at this image right here. You see, what happens first is out of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, phagophores form, and pr specific proteins, the ATG8 uh, is essential for elongation of these autophagic membranes. Um, it's a, a little while to do this because it takes a little while to synthesize these proteins. It's the amount of proteins that need to be synthesized to actually even make a phagophore. A phagophore. So once the phagophore is built, it comes up along some cargo and enwraps it like this, some debris and an old burnout uh, uh, mitochondria. And uh, it, it brings it and shuttles it over to a lysosome so it can be degraded. Once it's out of the lysosome, it gets broken back by these, uh, these acids in the lysosome itself back into amino acids and short chain proteins. So this is the beauty in, in dry fasting is you can kick on autophagy and the different phases of autophagy. I'll talk about microtophagy tomorrow, but macroautophagy is the biggie. It's the, it's the one that sequesters the big, big cargo, the, the burnout mitochondria, the burnout lysosomes. It, it takes care of all this stuff and what happens is genetic codes in the nucleus instruct proteins to be made and it takes a few hours to make enough proteins to make those phagophores to be able to make an autophagosome. So that's why autophagy takes, you know, a little while to kick in. But the beauty in dry fasting is you can keep it on. And if you can keep it on, you can get rid of all this garbage in the cells. Detoxing can't happen any other way like this. I mean, you can't take foods to detox. You can't take flushes to detox, salt flushes, all this stuff. You may get some some of your intestines flushed out. You may get a gallbladder flushed out. But every cell, this happens in all the cells. When you turn on top of you system-wide at night when you sleep, 37 trillion cells go into autophagic behavior. And after a couple of days of not eating and processing all the sugars and the mitochondria start processing free fatty acids for their fuel, it gets even more uh, efficient. It starts grinding up proteins that are really bad for your cells, grinding up proteins that have no business being in the body. It activates macrophages to go and find them. Macrophages are kind of like an autophagosome. They wrap around debris and then just dissolve it up. You know, it's a wonderful thing. But that's the thing today. Tomorrow we'll talk about microtophagy, which is how your body gets rid of things inside the cells like, uh, you know, bacteria and stuff like that. But uh, today it's macrotophagy and why dry fasting is so effective. It just keeps it on long enough. Yes? We have a message. Can you remind people to subscribe, please, sir? What now? Please. Oh, very well.